Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, so today I will be presenting uh, how to revive the old Ken Thompson backdoor in uh, modern OpenVZ make. So I'm Samuel Aubertin, also known on the interwebs as SCANS. I work for IBM uh, Security in France as a consultant. I'm a network and system engineer and a dropped out PhD uh, in cybersecurity in France as well. Uh, I'm, I've been using OpenBSD at home for um, nine years now, and uh, as well for my research, it's been a super nice tool to use uh, for multiple reasons that I won't explore more. Um, I like a movie. I would like to, to speak about you about an old movie from Stanley Kubrick, which is uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. And in this um, flick, uh, there is a machine called Al 9000, and Al doesn't really behave the way he should actually behave. Um, why is that? What if Al 9000 got actually backdoored? Maybe someone influenced the way Al 9000 should behave as a machine. So the question is, how can we trust HAL 9000? First, we need to think about physical security. Maybe someone entered the machine or the perimeter of the machine and modified the machine. Same for the actual hardware of the machine that has been shipped, maybe by a, 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 a constructor or a vendor. Um, the firmware as well is pretty interesting. It's the code that runs in the hardware, but you don't necessarily have access to it. Um, in modern computers, on your CPU, there are, there are firmwares that we don't have uh, code for, and every peripheral as well has some firmware to make it run in your computer. This could be the kernel or the user land as well. Uh, maybe the operating system of HAL 9000 got modified to misbehave, or the actual HAL 9000 program. Uh, it could be as well operations like the way all of these components are actually used by the end users or the administrators. But there is an interesting fact in, in this, is three of these components are actually code which is compiled at some point. And this code has been maybe audited. But what about the actual compiler that compiles this uh, firmware kernel or user land applications? And that's the whole subject of uh, Ken Thompson 1974, I think, a paper called um, Trusting Trust. Um, 84, sorry, my bad. Um, the conclusion of Ken Thompson is quite straightforward, is that we cannot actually trust any code that hasn't been written by ourselves, compilers included. That's quite harsh as a conclusion, um, and, and, and that's an interesting paper, which is quite old now, but I think is still um, really um, modern in, in, in some ways. Uh, the Thompson uh, paper specifies two features. The first one is um, for his backdoor to work, uh, you need self-replication, and maybe you know Quines. Quines are little games that you can play as a developer, and um, the idea is to develop a program that once executed will actually print itself or reproduce itself. So there is a little C example um, which will print exactly the same, the same uh, uh, um, input it has been used uh, to be compiled with. And uh, a, a coin, there are plenty of different coins uh, that you can find um, in, in the real world. Mainly, this is for games. Uh, there are golf uh, games where you, you want to maybe write the shortest coin ever uh, in a different language. I, you can visit, uh, I think there is a website called Rosetta Stone where there are like hundreds of coins in uh, different languages. Um, some of them are not real coins. Some of them like uh, 
cheat a bit, like they read, uh, let's say, the file macro in C, which contains the whole content of the actual file, uh, which is expanded by the preprocessor of, of the compiler. But this one is a real one, um, where we use uh, printf 10 and 34 in ASCII, which represents a new line and a, a double quote. Uh, to actually <laughs> reproduce the double quotes and the, um, the um, new line used between line one and two. The second feature is, is what Thompson calls learning. It's a weird, weird way to, to, to say programming, actually. Um, compilers, they do actually carry knowledge obtained from the, their own sources to the next hered hereditary binaries. Like you can tell your naive compiler um, uh, um, anti slash n is a new line. And then once you've compiled this compiler, when the compiler will encounter an anti slash m, it will maybe print a, 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 a new uh, um, line return. So you've learned or programmed your actual uh, compiler to do some things. And combining, oh yeah, well, combining these two uh, features, Thompson creates his factor. He says, okay, I'm going to learn my compiler, program it, in a way that if it compiles himself, he will create a crime. He will actually self-reproduce. And the second thing that the, the, the Thompson backdoors learns about is if you compile login from the Unix system, please make it misbehave. Maybe if I type a specific username, my password will be right every time and I could enter the system. And the, the backdoor is not into the login.c program. It's in the actual compiler which is used to compile login as a binary. So if we wrap up the things, we have a compiler source that we will call CS, which is compiled by X, and we obtain a compiler C. Then we use a second source that we modify to the program to misbehave. Um, and we use the newest compiler, which is C, to compile it. We obtain a new compiler, which is called BC. And this compiler is actually the Thompson backdoor. And the Thompson backdoor is interesting, because when you take again the first compiler source, which is same, that has been audited by uh, security or developer uh, uh, um, people, and you use it, you compile it with BC, you obtain the self-replicating backdoor compiler, actual real Thompson backdoor that could propagate uh, across generation because of the self-replication uh, mechanism that we've programmed into. So if we take again the compiler source TS and we recompile it with this new version, we obtain a second version of the same back self-replicating backdoor compiler. And then, with this lattice compiler, we may compile login, and login will misbehave. And the, the actual question we could ask ourselves is, OK, that's nice. Where does X come from? Maybe X is an actual Thompson backdoor. I never ask myself, oh yeah, I'm going to compile my compiler with X, but where are those X come from? And that's the real thing I like about this paper in, um, in uh, this uh, Ken Thompson uh, presentation he made at the ICM. Um, the origins of this uh, behavior is quite interesting. Um, the original Thompson paper cites an unknown Air Force document. Okay. After some research, 
you are able, we are, it's now available on the internet. Um, and it's a, a really old paper, which is 48 years old, which is called Multic Security Evaluation, Vulnerability Analysis. And in, in this paper, there is an interesting quote about some trapdoors, backdoors now, we call them, um, about uh, the programming language one, PL1, uh, which, wa which was used to uh, compile the kernel of Multix. And in this paper, they explain the essence of the actual vulnerability, which is even if we, we, we've got a, um, a misbehaving program, we are not able to really detect it. Because even if we recompile a trusted source, we are never ever able to assess the origins of our X compiler. And there is an interesting thing about that. I was reading this paper and I was like, hmm, so Thompson used CC, the C legacy compiler, to um, compile CC from CC.C. That's a lot of C. Um, and I was like, okay, so there is some kind of recursivity in, in, in this command. And recently I came up across, like, I had to do this for my work. I came across an interesting command I had to type. Um, I had to build Docker from source. And uh, to build Docker from source, you actually need Docker. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, there is something recursive as well in this command. And fact is, uh, compilers, by, per definition, at least C compiler used by Thompson is self-hosted, so he's able to actually compile in itself. Uh, but other components which are not compilers could, could behave this way as well, like Docker. And more recently as well, on OpenBSD, I typed this command. Do you see some similarities between these different commands? Um, and I was like, okay, uh, what if X is not a compiler but make? Let's do that. So, demonstration time. Um, but first, I just want to show you the program that we will attack. Um, if I'm in the right directory, yes, I am. This is just a copy of HAL 9000 user land program I just got. Um, I will compile it with the system make, which is sane, I promise. And I'm going to execute my HAL 9000 uh, program, uh, which asks me for a password to open the pay, the, 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 the pay door. So I type uh, random th things. And Hal tells me, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. So if we look at the Hal 9000 source, the password is actually encoded uh, uh, in a, in a sha, sha uh, hash. And it, uh, the input of the user, which is somewhere here is compared uh, with the, the hash, and if the hash are the same, so if Dave knows the password, then the door may open. Um, and that's this program we're going to attack with our uh, make command that I just keep typed there, but using a slightly modified one, of course, make version. Um, So I have the, 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 in this di directory, I have the HAL source, which is the same. You, you can uh, uh, check it again, but it's really the same that I, sh I showed you. Um, and then we've got uh, a make file to actually build the backdoor. Um, all this code will be available at the end of the presentation. There is a link at the end um, to actually uh, build as we saw the different steps to, to, to get our um, Thompson make backdoor. 
And I've got engine.c, which is a modified part of make, uh, the, the actual source code of make. And um, <coughs> in engine.c, somewhere, oh yeah, um, I think, yeah. I think it's here, yeah. It's here with better, okay. Um, I prepared that, but I forgot. Um, I have my two features uh, encoded into engine.c, and the make file, we make a patch of it, and then do some specific stuff, and create uh, a, a new version of, of uh, make for me. So the first part, it's the self-replication one, occurring when make compiles make. And the second part is uh, a simple backdoor that just does a set on, on the HAL 9000 source during, just before compilation, um, and uh, replace the source code, uh, the modified source code, again, back to its original form. So it's really simple, and um, the heuristics here are pretty straightforward and simple. I'm just looking for engine.o, which is a target for make. At some point, when you make make, you may compile engine.c in engine.o. And same for HAL 9000. Um, so, same for the demo. Which is, of course, in a make file. Um, <laughs> so, I've compiled make legit to be able later to uh, uh, compare it with other stuff. Uh, make legit from, from, comes from the original OpenBSD source. HAL 9000 as well. And then uh, I make the source factor. So the first generation, the orange one. And um, with this make source factor, I compile make from the legit source. And we can see the self replicating uh, um, job occurring. And so now we have a make binary backdoor. And we compile HAL 9000 again with this uh, binary backdoor. And then we just execute two occurrences of HAL, the first being the legit one with a uh, random password. And as, we, as I showed you uh, earlier, uh, HAL does behave correctly. He says, mm, that's not the good password. Sorry, but I'm not going to open the door for you. And using the exact same password, I'm uh, actually able to enter uh, the door. So I can do like this, and it will always misbehave. Um, I can add some characters as well. It will always open the door for me, and even if I audited the source code, there is no clue of this backdoor in the actual source. It's in the make, not even the compiler, that has been uh, used to, uh, to uh, build it. So the implementation details, I showed you uh, the actual source. Um, we are in uh, the do run command uh, function of uh, the engine.c in, uh, in, uh, in make source. And we just need a, a few variables which are available to us, available, sorry, to us, um, which is the, um, the name of the object that will be compiled with engine.o, and the command uh, that needs to be emitted by make to actually build this object, which is cmd. And so in the source, yeah, it's readable. OK, nice. Uh, I do something odd to, to, to obtain like uh, self-replication. My, my, um, my source code looks like that in engine.c, the backdoor one. So there is echo diff, and then I decode it with base64. Not that. Fact is, I need to encode my backdoor uh, to be able to survive multiple generations of recompilation. 
<coughs> and in the make file I showed you that I used to make this demonstration, there is this impact of code. So I just diff the, my version of engine.c, which is evil, against the legit source uh, engine, and I obtain a patch, dollar uh, at. And then I do multiple rounds of uh, encoding uh, for this patch. And then with this patch dot free, which is the third generation of my patch, I'm actually patching the, the, the real engine, the target engine uh, of the make SRC binary. So um, I have different levels, and the first one is the template backdoor, because I have, like, in my code, I just have diff, which is not an actual uh, misbehaving uh, behavior. It's not even decodable by base 4064. So I have my template of the backdoor, then I encode it one time, then a second time to be self-replicating, and then a third time to be able to actually never, to never hit the actual uh, templated backdoor, because I don't want in a, a few generations of my code to be actually able to stumble upon diff, which is not interesting to me. Um, for the, the targeting of AL9000, I use the same semantics. Uh, I, I, look, I look up the, the job name. And then I will mess with the, the, the actual command that make will do uh, to compile um, uh, HAL 9000. And what I do is simply left and right of my command, I will add some other shell commands. Um, the first one is set, which will actually modify the source code. There could be many different ways to actually backdoor HAL 9000. Uh, I choose this one because it's pretty st straightforward, and this talk is more about like um, the idea behind it more than the actual way you can do it. And I think it's quite simple. Like the whole backdoor of the two features are 29 of C. Uh, I think the Docker backdoor I made a few months ago is six, lin six lines of, of Go. So it's, it's quite cheap to develop. I think the, the backdoor uh, for Docker took me uh, about one or two days. And this one took me a few, a couple of hours to implement. Because once you grasp your head about the, the principle of self-replicating code and self-hosted components, it's really simple to implement this in any component that has these uh, properties. And so what I do is I just uh, change the, 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 the code, then execute the command, then change back the original state of the code uh, using MV and uh, I, the dash I org of said enables me to actually save a, a backup copy of the, the, the file before modifying it. And then it's uh, an uninteresting uh, string concatenation uh, stuff. But then maybe we can actually detect this kind of behaviors. Maybe. Um, I don't know, we, 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 could, we could actually do some static analysis of what? Of the compiler of make of HAL 9000? That's a difficult answer to, to, to because like, we don't really know where this kind of backdoor could be. So we could do differential anal analysis, let's say uh, using uh, a legit make that we trust, how oh, I don't know, but we trust it, and then compare it uh, using the Levenstein distance, or even just doing a, a binary diffing between our programs. Um, there are a few tools for that. Uh, Bindiff, which is a commercial proprietary one. Uh, there is um, Radif, which is part of uh, the radar uh, toolkit. Uh, which is open source. Um, maybe we can go further. Maybe we can do some decompilation. Uh, maybe we can use uh, a few other, other tools like Ghidra or Radar2 as well. 
uh, which are um, tools that we can use. Maybe I can show you, I have time, uh, to actually um, see what's happening. Uh, so let's, uh, I have, yeah, I have my uh, binaries there. I'm gonna load uh, into Radar the binary backdoor of Make. Okay, uh, there are four tunes. I was lucky for this one. Uh, Radar emits uh, weird fortunes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just gonna do a, a static analysis of functions so I can have the symbol tables. Um, so let's list the function tables. Okay, not there are plenty of them. Uh, some of them have symbols because I'm lucky. I've compiled make uh, with the debug symbols, which are quite useful. And I'm gonna grab for, uh, shop. don't remember, yeah, this object. This symbol contains our vector. Let's inspect it, let's um, disassemble it. Okay, that's a lot of code. Okay, okay, you didn't see anything. Okay, there is the, the, the function and the symbol uh, entry, plenty of things happening, plenty of things, plenty of things, and then at some point, we stumble about a large string, which is a patch dot free. And this large string should appear soon. Oh, here it is. So actually, we can do binary decompilation, or at least scan the, the symbols in this, uh, in this uh, binary to, to find such backdoors. But maybe uh, I could use a, a waste tilt uh, way to, I could XOR it, I could hide it in, in uh, I don't know, um, I could build like a return-oriented uh, path uh, using preceding symbols already found in the binary or in another one. Um, so we can do that, but that's quite like uh, uh, manually, uh, we need to inspect, as I said, maybe make, maybe the compiler, maybe HAL 9000. Um, maybe we can do some runtime analysis as well. Uh, we could use on OpenBSD Bitrace, Trace, maybe run it on a debugger and inspect uh, what's happening. Uh, same, Radar uh, supports uh, uh, a debugger mode uh, that where you can run interactively your, your program into. But these tasks are quite tedious. Um, there is a guy David A. Wheeler, uh, 20 years ago, he was reading the Thompson paper. He made some interesting um, contribution about um, trusting trust. And this contribution, his contribution is the diverse double compiling method, which is a way to detect some of the backdoors uh, emitted by the Thompson uh, hack. And the idea is, Okay, we spoke about the compiler of source CS uh, before. Uh, you took a compiler that you don't really trust, X maybe, and you compile it, and you obtain the compiler, the binary compiler, X1. Then you take a second compiler, Y, that you don't really trust more than X, but which is slightly different. Maybe you, you can take, I don't know, um, GCC for X and C long and LLVM for uh, Y. So you have two um, compilers, X1 and uh, Y1, which are binary different. They come from different compilers, so they are not the same. But they share a feature. These compilers are compilers, and functionally they should emit the same binary code. So let's do another round of compilation and with X1 compile again CS and obtain X2. And with Y1 compile Y2. And then X2 and Y2 
should be binary equivalent because they are the same implementation of different compilers or same compilers in functionality but different in implementation or compilation source. And um, <clears throat> if you're able to do that, then you are able to actually detect if X or Y was backdoor. You cannot tell which one uh, because you don't trust any of them. Maybe there is, there is a slight chance they share the, they share the same backdoor. Could be possible. Um, but that's, that's one way uh, to, to do that. Um, there are a few uh, related works uh, appearing in uh, POC or GTFO, uh, which is a very nice read. Um, the first one is they enable backdoors using compiler bugs. This paper shows a way to actually backdoor sudo, sudo um, by patching uh, GCC with a little patch, which is about like maybe some typos in the code. And the guy actually submitted the GCC commit between, be, be, before it was removed. And um, for the, this specific version of GCC and using a specific version of sudo, you will obtain a backdoor of sudo. And the interesting part of this paper is the fact that it's deniable because it's just a bug. Oh, sorry, I wanted to type it to, to fix a typo. And then I've got a backdoor. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting uh, feature. And um, <clears throat> from one of the authors of this paper, there's a, a nice blog post as well, <coughs> uh, which simply uh, enumerates a few ways that us as uh, distributions or maybe compil compiler developers, we should behave in front of this problem, which is honestly quite old and not new. So the actual conclusion uh, of this talk is, yeah, computer science is quite a recent thing in uh, human history, but we have this problem for quite half a century now, and it's still unresolved. And um, maybe we, we should actually think about new ways. I don't know, I have no answer to, to this actual real problem. Um, I just wanted to share it with you. And um, some, some of them, some, some people could think about maybe reproducible uh, builds that we have seen a few years ago, notably in Debian, I think. But it doesn't actually fix the, 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 the self-replicating problem on, on, on the compiler that you trust. So maybe next time when you choose a self-hosted component of your system, you should really think about the origins of X could be make, could be Docker, could be uh, uh, GCC. Um, there are there are like plenty of other components which are self-hosted, and the next time you stumble about, upon upon uh, a command that look like that, think about it and tell yourself, okay, mm, this this could be an issue. Maybe it's not. I'm not over paranoid and I'm not saying that every compiler or every uh, Docker runtime you use is uh, actually backdoored. I'm just saying it's doable and it's quite cheap. Um, maybe uh, this could be a, a game for you to do that. Um, anyway, let's discuss about that if you fancy such discussion. And you can find the whole code and slides at this uh, Git repository. I don't mind browsing it with a web browser because it, it just will kick you out, but it's cloneable using Git. Um, and 
I think that's it. Um, we have like 10 minutes to discuss about, about that. And I, I'm super eager to hear from, from your feedbacks. Uh, thank you, everyone. So do you have any questions or comments or things we, you didn't really understand in, in, in the, the presentation? Throw it. <laughs> I just wanted to add two quite important observations. The first is um, when people talk about uh, trusting trust, they mostly considered an academic problem. Uh, we had this issue that was discovered a while ago that uh, the, the Delphi compiler, uh, the object-oriented Pascal thingy that was very popular in the 90s on Windows, uh, was actually chipping um, uh, malware in the compiled binaries for a long time. So everyone who was using Delphi was creating uh, malware and distributing it. So we've also seen a couple of other um, uh, attacks on the supply chain uh, that pretty much look just like this. And the second observation, if you look at uh, reflections on reflecting uh, trusting trust, yeah. uh, the PhD thesis from uh, Wheeler, you'll notice that the approach he's taken doesn't work for some of our supposedly very secure modern uh, programming languages because, for example, Rust doesn't have a independent second implementation. Everyone nowadays using Rust typically ha is getting some Rust compiler binary from someone and trusting that to work. Uh, it's, insanely complicated and slow to actually bootstrap uh, Rust. The, the very same situation with Java, with Go, uh, the list continues. Haskell is uh, one of the traditional examples and uh, if you can't provide a, a short bootstrap cycle uh, for your uh, programming language, maybe it's not as secure as you think it is. <laughs> yeah, good point, thank you. Does anyone else want to uh, participate or have a comment? Um, that was, those are good points. Just, just one correction. Go does have a reasonably good bootstrap story because you can build uh, Go 1.4, which only requires a C compiler, and you can build any modern Go version with Go 1.4. So in the package source, we actually build sort of Go from scratch without the need for a bootstrap binary. But yeah. So, so you're able to actually uh, self-host uh, Go from um, uh, scratch on your machine? Yep. Nice. From C. Nice. So you just need to trust CC. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. No, that's, that's, that's the best we can do. No, no, I'm, I'm really joking. And I, I think we, we shouldn't be like paranoid about this issue. It's a real one, but at the same point, we are humans, we trust each other. Uh, I would also like to mention that there's an implicit uh, context there being the operating system, and you trust it to provide it the uh, right file to the compiler, and you can make the OS itself... Uh, yeah, you to compile OpenBSD. When it's compiling itself, it, it can also create a hostile... Of course, system. operating systems are self-hosted components as well. Yeah. Uh, it's quite difficult at least for the BSD. Maybe NetBSD has some uh, cross-compiling options. Uh, I'm not really aware of that. But uh, on OpenBSD, you definitely need OpenBSD to build OpenBSD. Um, we could like talk days about, like, I have a friend which is doing um, uh, CPU synthesis. And the funny thing is he is able to emulate a non-existing CPU on the platform it's called software synthesis, and you take an hardware definition and you synthesize it on an FPGA, uh, and then you have obtain a synthetic 
processor to test it, maybe. Uh, and the funny thing, he was running um, how, uh, hardware definition of an FPGA on an FPGA. And maybe the actual hardware FPGA was lying about something. So it, it, it's it's non-endable problem. Like, um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, operating system for sure are, are vulnerable as well. Mark. As the maintainer of OpenBSD Make, I will deny everything. <laughs> now, the real point is, as human, we are creating bonds and we are trusting each other, and, and, and there is no need to be overly paranoid about such things, especially in the open source community. But too much confidence as well is not good, but we are trusting ourselves together, like, and, and that, uh, that's a, a human thing. Um, and I think that's okay to trust someone is, is being able to be confident about, about ourselves as well, and that's important. So I'm, I think I'm, I'm done. Do you have any more? Uh, interventions, suggestions? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>